Hi, today I'm going to talk about making a prototype case for one of the model railroad throttles that I've been working on. Welcome to another episode. Hi, my name is John. In the last episode, I mentioned that I was going to be going to Pennsylvania to work with the other people and also with uh, TCS on the model railroad throttle that I've been working on. Before going there, I wanted to have a, some prototype throttle cases for the smaller throttle. I 3D printed a bunch of cases, but they're not an exact match. There are differences in capabilities and I had to make some compromises for the personal 3D printing. So I had this idea just before it was time to leave of like about a week before it was time to leave of using my CNC machine to 3D mill the set of parts out of solid blocks of plastic. Now because I didn't have the idea earlier I didn't have time to order plastic so I went to Tap Plastics which is just a couple of miles from my house. They had UHMW but they didn't have ABS uh, or acetal in the size that I needed so I used uh, UHMW. UHMW Machine's okay, but it tends to push the plastic sideways sometimes instead of removing it, so you get a lot of uh, extra plastic that I had to get in there with a hobby knife and scrape it away, which wasn't a lot of fun. This is the result. You can see I have two halves here, and each one of these was a solid block of plastic, and I would mill it from one side, turn over the block of plastic, mill it from the other side, and then cut it out. And there are some things that worked better than others. So uh, on the top, let's see if I can get in here uh, close enough. So right here is the depression for the uh, thumb switches. And that turned out well on the top, but on the, on the bottom I should say. But on the top, I forgot to mill that part out, so it's not actually there. Uh, and I thought about that when it was too late. So if I were to do this again, there's a lot I learned and therefore I would do a much better job. Uh, if you look on the inside, it might be kind of hard to tell, but there's some areas like along here where I had to do a lot of scraping with a hobby knife because there was plastic left over. But you can see it did a, a good job and gave me uh, good results. Uh, here, this should, actually over here, it should have been cut all the way through, but I was basing um, my offsets on the thickness of the material for measurements I made. So it looks like I was off by about five thousandths of an inch and therefore that's about how much plastic is left here and you can see it'll actually come off pretty easily if I just start grabbing it and I can tear it off. Uh, that's for the battery compartment opening. Anyway, what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is show compressed footage of the 3D milling. The 3D milling took about five and a half hours of machine time compared to less than three hours for 3D printed parts. And a lot of work with me going in there, checking things out, uh, changing the cutters, uh, flipping things to the other side, etc. So it was actually a lot more work than 3D printing. And so what I've concluded from this is that I'm going to use 3D printing for the majority of the test because it's a lot easier. But I will get some ABS or acetal plastic also known as Delrin, for the final test because that will allow me to get much more precise results than I can get with a 3D printer. Anyway, let's head to the workshop and the rest of the video is all going to be 3D milling, so if you're not interested in that, you can skip the rest of the video and you won't miss anything. Otherwise, enjoy and I'll see you next time. Something that took me a while to figure out is how I was going to hold this piece of plastic down to the bed. And the problem is, I didn't have any hold down clamps and I couldn't find any hold down clamps that would fit the tag because the tag has smaller T-slots than most of the other mills. I looked on Thingiverse and I found some step locks as well as some hold down clamps that were designed for the larger T-slots. So I scaled them down to a little bit more than half the size and I'm going to try using plastic 3D printed step locks and clamps to see how that works.
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is uh, get a dial indicator in here and make sure that I've got this lined perfectly with the front end. Okay, I got this set back up, so let me zoom in again. Actually, I was looking at this more carefully, and this is a uh, tenths indicator. So I'll go ahead and sweep that back and forth now, and let's see how we're doing. I did try to get it relatively straight by feel in the front. Okay, so obviously uh, it's not straight. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll go over to this other side and then carefully try to move it forward. And I'll see if I can get behind here and hit it with something light. Okay, I'm not quite sure how far I hit that. Let me uh, set it back to zero. And then let's go across and see how I'm doing. That's pretty close. Okay, so I'll set it to zero again here. We're off by just a, if I'm reading this right, we're off by a few tenths from one side to the other. So that means about one thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to see if I can, oops. Okay, I think that's about where I, I want it to be. Okay, that's ten thousandths. So I discovered that I can squeeze this to move it. All right. There we go. And let's try the other side. I'd say that's uh, pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tighten the, the four sides. 